I'm sure you have a view or two on whether we're hyped in terms of AI exuberance, valuations even. You know, it's, uh, it's fascinating, right? I, I've watched this cycle happen so many times. You know, I've been an investor for 15 years, and this happened when mobile phones first came out. There was a hype there, and you know, there were all these funds started on mobile. And today, you know, everything is mobile, right? Like, you, can you imagine uh, trying to book an Uber on your web browser? It just doesn't happen. You do it on your phone. And that hype sort of happened in 2000 and went away because we had everybody incorporating Uber, I mean, sorry, mobile into their, into their products and into their apps. And today we have AI, and there's this massive hype where people are, are saying, oh, we've got to invest in all these AI companies. But, you know, 10 years from now, five years from now, we're going to be incorporating AI as part of our products, part of our strategy. We've been doing it for 10 years, and we're going to do it for another 10 years later. So it's, a, it's an interesting cycle, but, you know, we've seen this happen year, over and over again. Okay, so take the long-term view, manage to sort of move out of the exuberance and the headlines. How are you picking which companies in this current cohort you want to be backing? Because I know you're all about the founder, yeah. but so how are you ensuring that the portfolio companies you have are resilient to the disruption and how the founders that you back right here right now are the right ones? It, it's, 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 again, we take our lessons from history. Uh, in 2010, when I started uh, at Google Ventures, we invested in a lot of mobile companies, right? You know, I, I was an investor in a company called Parse, which wound up selling to Facebook, and you know that Facebook wound up shutting it down. It made some money. The founder did well, uh, but we those those mobile companies aren't around anymore because again. It starts being incorporated as table stakes into every product. I think we're going to see some of that with AI again, right? This is a very, very contrarian view. Every one of my colleagues is rushing into AI. Some firms are creating AI funds just specifically for looking at AI, and we are not investing in AI companies for the sake of AI. We're investing in companies because there's going to be great business models that will be created by the AI, and we don't even know what those are yet. Um, there were all these mobile infrastructure companies in 2000. 10 when that happened. All those no longer exist. There's very few of them. The companies that wound up doing super well in that market had yet to be invented when that mobile craze came up. It was Uber, it was Airbnb, it was these companies that figured out a business model where mobile enabled it to happen. And I think we're going to see the same on AI. There's going to be new companies that will, 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 will change the landscape of how we do business, how we do work, how we buy products, how we book cars, how we book flights. And we're looking for those companies where that business model will be changed by AI rather than AI for the sake of it, right? There's a lot of hype going into it, a lot of money going into it. They're going to, you're going to see these, these wars between Google and Microsoft and OpenAI. And you know, these companies are well-funded, buying outrageous amounts of compute power. And you know, we, we, we want to be in the companies that are enabled by AI, not because AI exists. Wesley, it's been yes. almost a year to the day since you were on Bloomberg Technology because you'd raised and launched your $450 million fund. Yep. Based on what you just said, have you not pivoted at all in the first six months of this year to respond to what's happening around you in terms of strategy and where you deploy capital? We are investing in mission-driven founders that have a unique insight on how to change the world. When Larry and you know, I, I spent my first 15 years of my career at Google. I joined very, very early. There were very few people at Google when I joined. It was Sergey Brin's chief of staff, and Sergey is one of the co-founders of Google. Google is an AI company today. Back then, nobody saw Google as an AI company. They saw it as an ads company, a search engine. But Google has been using AI for 15 years. We're just investing in founders that get what new business models get enabled because of AI, and we've been doing this you know, for, for, for the last year, and I've been doing this in my career when I was at uh, Google Ventures in my previous fund for the last 15 years. Some of our best companies are enabled by AI, right? There's business models, certainly. That's where we're investing. So I'll give you an example. We have a company called Strand, uh, Strand TX, and they are redesigning the future of mRNA drugs. We have the mRNA vaccines that we got from Moderna and Pfizer, and there's a new generation of drugs coming, and they've redesigned uh, their mRNA sequences and they can figure out how to uh, target the cells that need the therapy, that need the drug. So they can target a cancer tumor. They can target, they can target your liver cells if there's a defect in your liver. And we have to def, uh, deliver a drug into it. And they use some AI to figure out how to create those sequences so the drug is most effective and not toxic at all so you don't have any side effects. We have another company called Inveda, right. for example, that is doing AI. They use AI in the data on mass spectrometry to find natural compounds that are able to be future drugs for people that help cure, cure disease, skin diseases, cancer. These natural compounds have been in use for a while, but how do we turn them into drugs so that they're just not like weird things that people buy at a drugstore? They're using AI to figure that out. There's business model certainty in these businesses, right? If it's a drug company and the AI helps them get to a drug faster, 
then we know that the drug is very valuable and the market values that. So those are the type of companies we're investing in. They're run by great founders, and the founders truly get that AI is helping them get to the value faster rather than just creating a new AI Wesley, th platform. Those, those are the types of companies, and I actually am really interested in the mechanics yeah. of how deal-making has changed over the last 12 months. So you launched with $450 million last year. Because of the inbound and activity around AI, are you having to write larger checks or write checks with more frequency to keep up with the energy of your industry? Well, we, we've never, ever, ever invested into the hype. When there were grocery delivery you know, companies where people were putting billions of dollars. I remember being pitched five of these grocery delivery companies. You know, in, my, in my place in New York, every, every week I was getting a new postcard for 30% off some 15-minute grocery delivery company. And at one point, there were 15 of them, right? We didn't invest in any of them. Same with the scooters. We don't invest into the hype. So we're investing, for example, into drug discovery, where AI enables that uh, that ability to get to the drug faster and to find a, a cure for cancer faster. And there aren't many people competing in that space for, for, for AI drug discovery companies. In fact, you know, every time we do a deal, there's probably like one or two other investors you know, looking at that space because everybody's chasing these, these overhyped AI companies where you know, we don't know which one's the winner. So we're very, very contrarian in how we look at companies. We do AI, but we don't do AI for the sake of AI. Just like in 2010, all the people that invested in mobile for the sake of mobile, those companies are no longer around. We love companies that are around for, for decades and, and centuries, if that's possible.